Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Advent is all about preparing for the coming of Jesus at Christmas into our lives and into our world. But will Jesus who arrives be the Jesus that we expect? The people of Israel expected a different Messiah. They were surprised by who came. Life is so full of the unexpected, things don't turn out quite like we think, do they? Right now, I should be sitting on a plane flying to Los Angeles. I checked out of my hotel and it was only a little while later that I got a call from the airlines to say that the flight that I was on had been cancelled and I'd need to call back later on and I would need to rebook. Well, later on I did call and I asked the, uh, the person at the airline, why had uh, the plane been cancelled? The person said, I don't know. Uh, and, and whilst it was frustrating, there was no point being upset with them because they had no idea. And so I booked again 24 hours later. And so I'm waiting until I can catch that flight. I didn't expect that. Well, the people of Israel maybe didn't expect what they got. The prophet uh, John the Baptist, who was just before Jesus, had been the one right before Jesus started his ministry who started walking around saying, someone's coming that's greater than me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. I must decrease in order that he must increase. This is, I, you know, I've baptized you with water and repentance. This, one, this, this Messiah who's coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And, and yet here we find John in prison. We're going to read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. And we find Matthew uh, telling us that John is in prison and John had got himself in, in trouble with the authorities because he'd called them out on wrongdoing that they were doing. He'd even said to them that they should repent. He'd called them some pretty harsh names. And here he is in prison and he's going to be ultimately killed. And he sends a message via a couple of his disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, the people that he'd been, who'd been following him, go and ask Jesus who he, is, who he is. Because as some academics say, this is not who we expected. Have a look in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. And when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Again, when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? In other words, what he's saying is we didn't expect this. We didn't expect the Messiah to be like what you are. Because who was Jesus and the things that he was doing that John had observed? Jesus seemed to, rather than be all about power, was all about being with the weak. All about, uh, rather than being all about position, seemed to be all about the people who had no position. Uh, Jesus seemed to be not about the people who had possessions and wealth, but the people who had nothing. Jesus seemed to constantly be with the oppressed, the weak, the ones who were disenfranchised from society, the rejected. And yet here the people of Israel had been waiting for a Messiah, someone who would come, who would lift them out of the oppression from where they were to something else. They got something different. They got something different and it threw them. And here's John the Baptist and John the Baptist is in prison and death is not far away. And he's sending this message to Jesus. Jesus, was it meant to be like this? Are you the one? Were you the one who was going to save us? You the chosen one? Did I somehow have it wrong that, yeah, you're a holy guy, but you're not the one? And, you know, are you, have I got it wrong? Because I'm in prison. We're not the leaders. The, 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 the evil powers of the day are still in power. People are still being oppressed. Are you the one or are we to wait for another? Do you ever stop and think to yourself about your own life? And you stop and you think to yourself, well, I didn't think that I would go through all the things I do. I heard of a beautiful family whose five-year-old daughter got leukemia and passed away. And it's tragic. I've talked to so many couples of late who their, their marriages ended in divorce and they were wonderful and beautiful people. People whose finances have gone pear-shaped through economic crises, the, you know, the downturn in, in interest rates or the up interest rates rising, the downturn in the economy, 
the Ukraine war has affected people in such a tragic way. You know, the, uh, COVID, of course, smashed so many people. And people stop and go, but I thought that if we were Christian, these things might not have happened. Uh, and some people get confused and say, I thought we were meant to be the light on the hill, the Christians. You know, and, and what we forget is we're not called to, we're called to be the light on the hill. We're not called to be the hill. We're called to be that community of people that shine out by our lives in the midst of what is going on. And what Jesus' promises is, Emmanuel, God is with us, that God's with us in the midst of our circumstances. Jesus came to give them what they were not expecting. He came to, give, to declare to them an altogether different type of kingdom, a different way of seeing and living than the one that they expected. And so let's read it again. And it says this, Matthew 11, verse 2, when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? And Jesus answered them, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor of good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. And as they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken in the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of me who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. And yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Here's John, this great man in the eyes of Jesus, who's frightened, who's scared, and who's saying, Have we got it right? Are you the one? I want to just say this to you very simply today so you can take this to your prayer as part of of our daily devotional. Don't worry if sometimes you don't understand everything and that Jesus' and God's ways is different because it is. There are so often when I don't understand things, when I look at things and I go, "Why why is God allowing those things to happen? Those things seem unjust and the just seem to do it hard at times. And sometimes life can see, seem so back to front and where you kind of think, well, because I'm a Christian lover of God, that he will look after me. And God is always saying to us, no, 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 I'm going to be with you in the midst of your life, pulling you into another kingdom, another way of seeing, another way of being. It's a mystery. Mystery is that which we can't explain. Mystery is that which, which, which we have to surrender to by continually saying to God, God, would you reveal in me your way? Reveal in me your way. And in a sense, what we need to do is exactly what John the Baptist did, that we need to send a message, are you the one who is to come? What I find myself in is, is God, reveal yourself more deeply to me so I see your way, so I understand your way. Advent is about saying to Jesus, reveal yourself to me so that I see your way. Loving Father, we thank you today that things sometimes can be confusing. And yet, Lord God, you call us into this relationship of love with you. Allow us, Lord God, to let go of our way and surrender to your way, which can be so different. Sometimes it feels like it's upside down and it's back the front. But your way is the way. Allow our hearts to be changed in this Advent as we seek after you, as we prepare our hearts to receive you as baby, not powerful, but weak, dependent, not strong. That's how you came, to show us your deep love, that you would strip yourself of all that you were as God, to lay your life down as a human being, that human element, that we would know your love and grace and goodness, that your love was so profound for us. May your kingdom come in our lives in this Advent, we pray. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get to Los Angeles. God bless you.